abroad. And uh, we are going to sing number 772, which is Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus. Solid rock. I, is that in the Heavenly Hour again? Uh, I think it is, but I don't know what, what page it's on. Can you find that, Caden? It's I'm standing on the solid rock. I, I apostrophe him. We'll go ahead and start it. <laughs>
stuff we have a special or Kaylin does Kaylin has a special she's gonna she's gonna sing blessings so uh, come on Kaylin
I have uh, something else to, I guess, extra to show you today, a little PowerPoint to go along with this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can see this is my first time to do a, a PowerPoint on Facebook Live. I know all this is always, uh, well, this is all new to us. I mean, I don't guess anything's new to us right now, is it, guys? Or old to us? Every, it seems like every day we have something brand new going on. Am I, am I seeing and everything there? I want to make sure everybody can see everything. It is. All right. Well, Judges chapter 3 is where we're going to be at this morning. Uh, you know, last week we talked about how uh, Israel had, had come in and they, they really didn't do what they were supposed to do, what God had told them to do. And I want to begin by reading uh, Judges chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. We'll just kind of read these together so that we can kind of get the context of what's going on. The title of the lesson is going to be God Will Prove You, using an acronym sometimes. Uh, well, acronyms are hard for me to come up with sometimes, but uh, I've got an acronym for you, and it's PROVE. God will prove you. Look at the context. It says, Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least, such as before knew nothing thereof, namely the five lords of the Philistines and all the, Phil and all the Canaanites and the city and uh, Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Bel Hermon unto the entering of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he, ha which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Amorites, and Pizzerites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Would y'all pray with me this morning? Dear Lord, we just want to ask that you really will speak to us today. Uh, I ask for the guiding... Uh, the guidance of your Holy Spirit that I may speak your words and I that I may be able to um, you know Lord there's somebody out there who doesn't know you there's somebody who's out there questioning why these things are happening the way that they're happening and and I just ask Lord that you really will comfort our hearts this morning and you will encourage your people that they will stay strong no matter what that they will be your witnesses and that they will look at these things going on around them and instead of being upset by them, but Lord, that they will draw strength from you and allow you to make them better people, better witnesses, better servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we get to we get to chapter three here, and and we need to and we need to understand something. What's going on? It's uh, in verse seven. Did you catch what was? What was asked, what was actually said there? Uh, I mean, not seven, but uh, but verse four. Verse four. It says, "And they were to prove Israel by them." You know, it's often said that a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted, and we have and we have to look at these things and we have to say, you know, if God is challenging my faith, what? You know, how is he, you know, what, what is really going on in my life? What am, I, what am I supposed to learn from these things that are going on? So he wants to prove us. And not only us, but he wants to prove our nation. You know, there haven't been many nations that have been set up under the principles of God. We had Israel back in the Old Testament days. And we had the United States back in the around uh, around the, the end of the 1700s that the that the nation was established based on godly principles and i don't care what the historian uh, reformers want to want to say about it 
you go back and you start reading the writings of George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and all those guys, and they believed in the God of the Bible. And their understanding was that, a, that our nation, our republic, and we're not, a, we're not a democracy. We are a democratic republic. We are a republic where we, where we elect our, our leaders. And we are supposed to be one nation under God. And we even write that on our currency. Congress has voted that we are a nation under God. Not under Allah, not under Buddha, not under Confucius, under God. The God of the Bible. If you want to know who they were talking about, they go back and read their writings. They were talking about the God of the Bible, not the God that you make in your own image. The God who looks at nations and nations that will conform unto the image of Christ, he will bless Nations that will rebel against the Almighty, He will judge and He will prove them whether they will obey the commandments that He has set forth. That is what's going on here with Israel. God had given them a land, a beautiful land flowing with milk and honey. And He says, go and take it. Take a hold of the promises that I've given to you. Yet they would not. They would not. So God left some things. He gave them some things that would prove them. Why? To see whether or not they would actually keep the commandments of Almighty God. Today, God is proving His church. And He is going to find out, is the church in America going to keep the commandments of Almighty God? We are going to see, within the coming months, we are going to see, are we really... The church in America that follows God? Are we a church in America that follows something else? We're going to find out. We're going to find out what, we, what the church in our country is really made of. That's coming to an America near you. It's coming to a church building near you. You know, if we get, when they lift the, all the, the restrictions, and all of a sudden the, the, the church houses are full of people, and they're so full that they have to start building more churches, we will know that we got the message, that the church got the message. But if we see the churches start closing their doors, because people are like, it was all right when the coronavirus is around to stay home, why can't I just stay home now? What's different? Well, for you, my friend and mine, there may be nothing different. But if you are serving the God of the Bible, you're going to say, it's not good enough for me to keep my religion to myself. It's not good enough for me to serve God by myself. I must serve God with God's people. And God has, He is saying, I'm going to prove you. I'm going to prove you. The church in the United States of America. And if you want this country to, to come out of this on a good note, God's people will humble themselves before Almighty God. They will bend the knee. They will be praying every single day. They will be praising Him the way that He should be praised. They will be worshiping Him the way that He should be worshiped. We think it's all about a song. It's not about a song. It's about you being willing to do like Abraham and take your the thing that you love the most up to a up to a rock and to sacrifice it and give it back to God, the one who gave it to you to begin with. Is that the church that we are today? God is in the middle of proving us today. I want to show you a few things. The first part of prove, P is to be patient. Be patient. The scripture from Romans chapter 2, verse 7, it says, To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immorality and eternal life. Let me explain a little bit about what I think that this verse is talking about. It says, who by patience. Whenever we see the things going on, seeing the, the being, having to deal with the draw from Peer, the peer pressure of society, 
Will we stay faithful to God no matter what? Will we continue to serve Him? Will we continue in well-doing for glory and honor and immorality, uh, for immortality and eternal life? Will we stick to the principles that are taught in His, in his Word? Let me tell you that I don't think that we're doing that as the church. You know why? And you can make up as many excuses as you want. But the, there was, a, there was a, a study that was done over the past two weeks that says giving is down 65%. That's across the board. Giving is down 65%. Now, I know I'm not asking for any money, but I'm telling you, church houses cannot pay their bills if people who used to give don't give anymore. They're just not going to be able to do it. And that's not just for churches. We're talking about every organization out there that helps people. You know, we just recently had the tornado happen here in Jonesboro. And you, do you see who shows up? They're all Christian-related organizations. They're the ones who showed up because they have the heart to care and they want to really give back into their community. Giving is down. Continuing well-doing. How about what's going on with the homeless? Giving is down to those guys too. People, they have nowhere to even go. Listen, God's people have got to stay grounded in the scripture. We have to say, I'm going to stay by God's word no matter what. And I'm going to continue in well-doing. And I'm going to seek to honor God and to glorify Him with my life, with all of my will, with all of, all of everything that I have. You know, I just wonder how much, uh, you know, how much the movie rentals has gone up. Nobody said that. People have got the money. They're spending it on stuff. But are they spending it on glorifying God? Honoring Him. Or what? Christians, those of you who are called by the name of Christ, be patient. Wait on God. That doesn't mean, that means that you sit back and you're like, well, I'm just going to twiddle my thumbs and I'm going to do nothing. No, patience means that you keep going for Jesus Christ no matter what's going on around you. That you don't base what you do on what you see other people doing around you. You are patient with God and you're like, it, even though it looks like I'm by myself, I will be patient. I will wait on God. He will deliver me and I will keep serving Him no matter what. That's what that patient means. It doesn't mean you sit back and you wait and you wait on things to happen. That means you see where God's working and you follow Him. That's what patience means according to God's understanding of patience, is really about. You look for Him. God, where are you working? And I will follow you. I'll get right behind you, and I will support you, God, in what you are doing. Are you doing anything for Jesus Christ today? You know, take a tally. What have you done? You've been sitting at home. What have you been doing for Jesus Christ since you've had since the restrictions have been added to our lifestyle be patient the next one be reverent R for reverent Joshua 24 and verse 14 he says now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord this is you know this is where Israel there they're struggling. Joshua just had this conversation with these people, and they're, and they're yet to really get a hold of it. Yeah, the generation that came with Joshua, they served the God, but the ones who followed their children, their grandchildren, they said, no, we don't want to. They need to go back and read Joshua. It says, fear the Lord. And you're thinking, oh, well, well, Brother Mitch, I thought you said we're not supposed to be afraid. Listen, you need to be a, you should have a good fear of God. Do you realize that He holds your breath in His hands? The Scripture says 
that Jesus, it's, that Jesus Christ holds this thing together. And by him all things consi consist. Do you realize that Jesus Christ is holding our nation together? If he says, no, if, the, if my people will not humble themselves before me, if they will not turn from their wicked ways, if they will not pray, well, maybe I would just do like I've done to these other nations that rebelled against me. And instead of holding them together, he says, I will just let you go the way that you want to go. I'll let you have your own imaginations. And you can just do, see how that works out for you. Well, look what, how it happened to Babylon. How about the Medes and the Persians? How about the Greek Empire? How about the Roman Empire? What happened to all of those? They fell apart. They were, they were in rebellion against God. He gave them a chance. And they said no. And God says, I will not hold your civilization together. I will let it do. I will let the devil do what he does best. Steal, kill, and destroy. Serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. I love this word. Every time I see it, it reminds me back when I, when I heard the message first preached from uh, Pastor Bickle in Utah. And he said that this word came from, and, I, and I've looked it up too, and it, and, it's, and it comes from this word that means without wax. You know, back in the Greek days when they would, when they would make a statue and they would, they would chisel away all the granite from the statue, that sometimes they would crack and they would fill those cracks up with wax. You can really see it in pottery, that sometimes people were dishonest with their pottery and, they would, and their pottery would crack and they would, and they would fill it with wax so that you couldn't tell that it, that it had a crack in it. Things without crack, that they, they would call it sincere, without wax, without any cracks, without any holes in it. He says, serve him in sincerity. Let me ask you, is there any cracks in the way that you follow God? Do you really reverence God the way that he's supposed to? Let me ask you, the, Joshua says, this is how you know. Put away the gods that you've acquired to yourself. Is there something else in your life that you're serving more than serving God? Is something else more important? Does something else take, take precedence in your life over than serving God? Here's you a good indicator. How much time do you spend during the week reading your Bible and praying or doing some kind of study of God's Word? How much? Now you put you tally that number, and then you go to the, all the other things in your life. How much time do I spend surfing the internet? How much time do I spend watching videos? How much time do I spend doing these other things? If you get to the end of that marker and you see, well, I actually don't even give 10% to God, you hadn't even tithed of the rest of your life. And what you will find out is that you've got some other gods in your life. And you need to serve the Lord in sincerity. You're not serving Him in sincerity and truth when you, when you have other gods in your life that you're worshiping, that you're giving more attention to than you give to God. Now, I get it. you got to go to work. Do you realize that you can serve God at your job? That you seek, that you seek to honor God with your profession, whatever that may be. That will be your character. That will be you, um, you know, talking to God during those times, during your break time, praying and, and things like that. That God is on your mind. It's not the job that's constantly on your mind. God, whenever you get a free moment, God takes hold of your mind. Or does something else take hold of your mind? If there's always something else that takes hold of your mind, that takes hold of what you desire, that's a false god. That's an idol. Anything that you put before God is an idol, a false god. It could be an idea. It could be something physical. It's an idol.
serve the Lord in sincerity and truth. Put away those gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. Hey, serve him in sincerity and in truth. Look at this next one. Be obedient. The children of Israel, they were struggling with their obedience. They wanted to obey what they wanted. They, they just wanted what they wanted, and they wanted it now. Romans 6.16 6, says it like this. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey? Do you get what it's saying in Romans 6.16? 6, that the one that you, when you do something... You're obeying somebody. Now, if you're doing something sinful, you're obeying the author of sin, the author of lies. That's the devil. You are serving him. Jesus would say it like this. You cannot serve both God and mammon. You will cling to one and despise the other. You will hold to one and you will reject the other. You can't serve them both at the same time. To whom you yield yourselves to, that's who you obey. That's who your God is. Who are you obeying today? Israel is struggling here. America is struggling now. Who are we really obeying? Who are we obeying? Whether of sin unto death. Listen, if you're going to serve sin, you will face an eternity without Jesus Christ. You will face an eternity without heaven. Sin unto death, if you will, of obedience unto righteousness. Listen, the righteousness that we're talking about, it's not anything that you can produce. It's not, you're not, you're not obedient because uh, because of works, you're obedient because you want to. You know, there's an old song that we used to sing when I was growing up. It's it, it's kind of it kind of states like this. It's true I can do whatever I want, but my wants have been rearranged. Do you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you want to obey him? Jesus would say it like this. If you love me, what? You'll keep my commandments. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? If you do, you will keep his commandments. Not because you have to. You want to. You want to be obedient. You want to be reverent. The next one is val val <clears throat> valiant. It's hard work for me to say sometimes. Look in Hebrews chapter 11, 33 through 34. It says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quick, uh, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight the enemies of the aliens. I don't know if it really translates well through that verse or not, but do you see the idea? Valiant people, they're not afraid. They're not afraid of, of what's going to happen. They want to serve the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They want to do what they can for God, no matter what. And you could ask these guys, were you afraid? You know, I asked Daniel, Daniel, how did you feel right before you were thrown into the lion's den? And I bet Daniel would tell you I was concerned. I was a little bit afraid. But I trusted God no matter what. Because I knew that no, if I died, I would go to heaven. It didn't matter. I, I knew that it was more important to serve God than that it was to serve man. Man was telling me, you cannot serve God like that anyway. You know, I think that day is coming for America. I think it may be coming soon where you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to serve God God's way or am I going to have to serve God man's way? 
Listen, if you serve God's man's way, it's not God's way at all. It's only man's way, and you're serving man. You've, you're obeying man. You're not rever reverencing God. You're not obeying him. You're not valiant. You're a coward. There, I said it out loud. And we live in a land. We used to be the home of the brave. Now we're the home of the afraid. You know how I know? There's a bunch of afraid people out there. And you know why they're afraid? Because what if I get sick and I die? Listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you get sick and you die, you should be afraid. Because you're going to bust hell wide open. And you're going to be like, but God, I was a good person. And God's going to say, there's none good but God. What makes you a good person? Well, I never killed anybody. Did you hate your brother without a cause? You're a murderer. Well, I never told a lie. Are you you're telling a lie right now? I saw you. You were born lying, telling lies. You have you ever stolen? Oh, I never stolen. Did you ever, ever taken a pen? Anything? You've stolen. You've broke the law. James, in the book of James, it would say, if you fail the law in one respect, you're guilty of all the payment. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's His righteousness. And He paid the debt that you could not pay. Can you be a, val a valiant person? No one, it doesn't matter what happens to me. The only thing that matters is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only thing that really matters is knowing that Jesus Christ lives and he has prepared for me a place and I'm going to go there one day. I don't look at this world around me and think this is my home. I look at this world around me and I think like Abraham and I'm like, there is a place better than this. There is a place much better for this. There is a city that's built without hands. It's built by Almighty God Himself. And He's offered it to me. He's offered it to you. The Scripture would say, Jesus would, would say, Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. And few there be that find it. The call goes to all. But many, many, many will reject it. Why? They're not valiant. They're too afraid of the things in this world. It would be much better if you had a healthy fear of God. If you had a healthy fear of God, you're not afraid of what's going on in this world. You know God's got it all under control. He even told us that these things were going to happen in the last days. Why are we so concerned? We should be more concerned now that the gospel has been limited because you're staying at home and you're not getting out there. You're not being the witness that you need to be. That should concern us. I've heard, I've heard a bunch of people say, well, the gospel is getting out in a better way than it ever has because it's going on Facebook Live and YouTube. Everybody's preaching the gospel online. Is that really true? Are the lost really looking to those messages that the churches are putting out there? Yes, yeah, the foolishness of preaching that gets the gospel out there. But it's because God's people are going. You're not going to find in the scripture where Jesus says, Oh, I'll just put everything on YouTube and it'll be... And it, that's, that's a good way of going. That is a way of going, but that is not you going. The scripture says you are supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You are. Everything that you're doing, the people that you talk to, the people that you interact with. And don't worry about what may come in the future. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this last one. Engagement. Ephesians chapter 3, 17 through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth understanding, 
that you might be filled with all the fullness of God? Are you engaged with God? Are you, are you trying to find a way, how can I reach out? What am I rooted in? What am I grounded in? You know, one of the things that, that I've seen so much, you know, my voice really doesn't reach that many people. Not compared to what the false doctrines are out there today. Jesus said in the last days, false teachers and false prophets would arise. They would be everywhere. They would have the loud voice. They would have the most people listening. And it makes sense, doesn't it? They whisper those sweet nothings in their ears. They, tick, they tell them what they want to hear. So yeah, people are going to lend an ear here. Oh, I like listening to this guy. He says I can go to heaven and it doesn't matter what I do. I can go to heaven. It doesn't matter if I really, if I really committed my life to Jesus Christ. If Christ, in Ephesians chapter 3, 17 through here, it says, if Christ is dwelling in your hearts by faith, how are you going to, how are you going to hold back? How are you going to keep it to yourself? You want to be rooted and grounded in love. You want to be rooted and grounded in the scriptures. Not opinions. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. What matters is what does God's word say. <clears throat> you know why this is important? so that you may be able to comprehend with all saints. Do you really want to understand what's going on today? It's in His Word. If you're really rooted and grounded in the Scripture, you look around and you're like, all things are bad. You may not even like what's going on. I don't like what's going on, but I understand what's going on. Folks, we're living in the last days. We're living in the last of the last days. In fact, I would even say we're living in the last of the last of the last days. The return of Jesus Christ is just around the corner, and he said, and Jesus said, before I return, things are going to get really, 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 really bad. They'll be like in the days of Noah. I've, I've asked my dad a couple of times, I'm like, Dad, I wonder how bad it can actually get. It can get really, really bad. It can get so bad. I mean, just look what hap what's happened in Germany back during World War II. Churches that wouldn't do what the government said were closed down. Jews and Christians were rounded up and taken to concentration camps. Eight million Jews lost their lives in camps and the world let it happen and you're like that sounds bad that sounds really bad yeah if it happened back in the 1940s do you think it can happen again you better believe it you better believe it can because the scripture even says that in those last days, read Matthew chapter 24. What, what does Jesus say? That the love of many will grow cold. Why? Because iniquity abounds in their hearts. They have rejected the scriptures. They have rejected sound doctrine, sound teaching, sound scriptures. They don't want to listen to preachers like me. They want to listen to preachers that whisper those sweet nothings in your ear and tell you that it's all okay and that they... They just, man, they just roll over to whatever the world lays in front of them. They give in to the doctrines of devils, and they don't stand on solid ground, the solid ground of Scripture, the love of Jesus Christ, true love of Jesus Christ. How to remember? His commandments make up the love. Don't murder your neighbor. Don't steal from your neighbor. Honor God. With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. By those two, encompass the whole of the, of the law. 
Are we loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Are we really loving our neighbor as ourself? We need to be engaged with these things so that I can understand the breadth and the depth and the length and the height of what Jesus Christ wants to do during these days. So I want you to have, so I want you to know God is proving us today. He wants to prove you. He wants to know are you patient? Are you reverent? Are you obedient? Are you valiant? And are you engaged? You see, Israel had a problem. They weren't leaning on God. They had turned from him. They had started worshiping other idols. They weren't reverencing God. They didn't care what he said. They didn't have a fear of God. They were not sincere. They liked God and they liked the world and they wanted the best of both things. They were not obedient to God. God said, you need to go out and get the promise. And they said, no. God said, you need to worship me and no other gods. They said, no. God said, don't take, their wives, don't take their daughters to be your wives. And they said, we don't care. We're going to do what we want, God. They were not obedient. They weren't valiant. They were afraid of not being a part of this world. Listen, Christian, this world is not your home. You're just passing through. Just like the song says, your treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Listen, don't get caught up in this world. There is something better for you. Be valiant. Be brave. Be bold. Be engaged. Engage with God. See where He is working. Get with Him Understand, be rooted and grounded in God's word, in his testament, in his teachings. Know him better than you ever have before. We've got a long road ahead of us. God's going to prove us. Church, God's going to prove us. He's already proving us. And he's looking at what we're doing right now. And he's looking for that, those people. Looking for those who are willing to stand in the gap. Willing to say, Lord, I, can, I am willing to, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm going to be your witness. We need people to come out of this and say, I'm going to work for Jesus Christ harder than I ever have. Our rights went away too easily. The door shut too quickly. We've realized that what we've done in the past just didn't work like we thought that they should. God, you've proven me. What I want to do is I want to prove that God didn't make a mistake with me. I want to be found faithful. Because I know there's some people that they're lost and they're dying and they're going to hell. And I have the words of eternal life. Church, God's proven us today. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I just want to ask that you would help us to be patient during these times that we'll see what you're doing and we'll follow you, that we'll work where you want us to work, that we will not be satisfied with the status quo, that we want something better than what we have seen in the past, and our patience will be upon you, that you, we know, Lord, that you can work those things that need to be worked. Help us to follow you. Help us to be reverent in all the things that we do, that we will reverence you and that we will honor you and we will glorify you with our lives. That, that with our service to you, that we will do it in sincerity and in truth. Help us that, that we will be obedient to you and not to the things of this world. Help us to be better as being your servants, Lord. 
and not to get caught up where our thoughts and our minds are drawn away. Lord, draw us to you. Let us be drawn to you. Help us to be valiant, Lord. We know that the obstacles are against us. We know that the world does not want us to. We've already seen the obstacles growing and approaching your church, your church in, our, in our country. Lord, help your people to be valiant in these last days. Lord, help us to be engaged in these things, that we will know the truth and let your truth make us free. God is Lord in these things, and I ask that you will bless your people, all those who are called by your name, that they will honor you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you will grow your people, that they will walk that narrow way, and that they will call those who are headed on that broad way to destruction, that they, that they can be saved. Lord, we know that you're still in the soul-saving business. Help us, Lord, to engage in that. God is Lord, as you prove us today, help us, Lord, to prove ourselves faithful servants of the Almighty God. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.